Hello, this is H.C. Bailey, and welcome to my latest main Let's Play series developed by Sting and published by Atlas. Cryware, Cryware made the engine for this game, and I don't know what alchemy does. But if you love traditional JRPGs with kick-ass music, unique gameplay mechanics, then come and let's play Hexes Force for the PSP. I love this game. Just a fair warning, viewers, I'm going to be a complete fanboy in this LP. I have not been this passionate about a new game that I've played since Radiant Historia. I've played this game over 10 times in the past year. It's about 20, 25 hours, but still, it's a lot of times to play the game. <laughs> and uh, I wrote a full text walkthrough and an item list on GameFAQs to accompany this LP, so they'll be in the video description below. So if you want to play ahead of me, you can. Just take a look at the walkthrough there. I'm pretty much going to follow it to the letter. Uh, they did make hard copies of this game, but they're ridiculously rare and expensive. So uh, I'd recommend just getting it on the PSN for the PSP or the Vita, if you have one. This game does remind me a lot of Radiant Historia, though. Uh, don't get me wrong, this, it, this game is not Radiant Historia. I mean, if you hate Radiant Historia, well, I don't know what you want. But Hexus Force, it's more like a poor man's Radiant Historia. Uh, it, it's very similar in that it doesn't really do anything revolutionary, but, and it's a relatively simple game, but it does a lot of the little things right. Like, you can fast forward in the game with dialogue or battles with the R button. You can check on previous dialogue or maybe a treasure that you collected too quickly by pressing the square button so you can see what you got there. You can sort of go back and look at it. And uh, even the anime cutscene. Uh, you can skip those if you uh, really don't like the voice acting for some reason. Uh, you can press the circle button. You can, or I think it's the circle button, or maybe it's the start button. It's been a while since I've actually skipped a cutscene, but anyway. So yeah, you can do all that. It's got a lot of amenities of modern JRPGs. Um, I mean, I think the voice acting is fine, though. I mean, if you don't like it, I mean, there's not too many cutscenes, and they're mostly pretty short, too. So, I mean, just so many little things this game does right. It doesn't bog you down with the story, either. So, I mean, yeah, I just really like how they handle all that. Uh, I love the music in this game. <laughs> okay, so let's get started here. I'm gonna start a new game. I deleted all my old save files here, so let's check it out. Now, uh, one of the unique features of Hexus Force, well, maybe it's not unique, but uncommon, is, is that you can start as one of two protagonists, Cecilia or Levant, who's apparently German, I guess. At least I think that's a German name. But anyway, uh, yeah, so um, unlike Seiken Densetsu 3, where 90% of the content is the same between all the different paths of the game, uh, in Hexus Force, the two paths are drastically different, with more like 90% of the game being unique, or the content there. Now, uh, th that said, both paths do take place in the same world, and they'll be going through a lot of the same dungeons, but, uh, like, the treasures, the bosses, the plot relevance, wh what you're there to do, I mean, all that is diff completely different. Uh, like, for example, in one dungeon, uh, Cecilia might explore one half of it, while Levant explores the other half with their own unique purpose and reasons and motivations for going there, their own unique boss fights and plot progression and everything like that. And everything's done in a completely different order from one path to the next. So, I mean, it's not like Second Densetsu 3 where they're all in the same order for the most part, really. Now, the other thing, cool thing about Hexus Force is the New Game Plus feature. Once you finish one path in the game, you can New Game Plus into the other path. Uh, however, it's not like Chrono Trigger where you just start a New Game Plus massively powerful. I mean, some things carry over, but uh, well, I'll go over that when I get there. It's still a decent challenge to do it that way. So, uh, as for which path to, to start with, uh, well, I think it depends on if you want to play one path or you think you want to play both. But uh, I think Hexus Force does a really good job of making one path feel satisfying if played alone, but if you really like the game and you play the other path, it's 
still rewarding to get more background on the story and everything like that. So usually I wouldn't think you could do that, but this game does a really good job of that. Now if you're going to play both paths, I recommend starting with Cecilia here, because some of her events take place before Levant's path, so it sets up his story a little better. Uh, I mean, you could do it the other way around. I did that when I first played the game, and I, I loved it. But uh, well, I just think it works a little better this way, starting with Cecilia. Now, if you only want to play one path, well, it depends on what you want from the game. I mean, I think Levant's Path has a more interesting story with the war and political intrigue and racism and all that involved. But I think the, char the characters are pretty much all Malay fighters and primarily stick to using the brute force method. So there's really not a whole lot of variety in the combat there. So uh, You could still use some magic, but eh, just not as much. On the other hand, Cecilia's Path is says, a coming-of-age story. Uh, I guess she likes to skip out on church, so uh, well, she's got some maturing to do. Her path still has great villains and character motivation, but well, I just like the premise of Levan's story better there. So, I mean, neither is horrible or anything like that. Uh, however, on Cecilia's path, uh, the battle mechanics are definitely more interesting, since her path has far, is far more magically inclined, so you have a lot of different ways to annihilate enemies, and there's a lot of variety to it. So I find that more entertaining in that respect. So uh, pick whichever one you want. For this path, I or for this LP, I will be starting with Cecilia's path, and I will eventually do another LP of Levant's path. Probably not immediately after, but well, you'll see. What's the Holy Vessel? Well, let's find out. We'll learn more about that soon enough, viewers. And what is the Vessel? The Holy Grail? Let's find out. I guess divinities are like sub-gods or something or other like that. Now, these are names of the divinities, so if you don't know what they are, well, if you're playing this for the first time, you probably don't, but I'm just saying. Don Corneo is a god? No. No, that's another game. Oh, well, that's good. If only. Oh, yeah, one thing you can do here, if you press the square button... You can check all the previous dialogue there, so if I skip through something too quickly, uh, then I can just press that button and check out what I missed. So, that's pretty nice. I really like that. I've never seen that in a JRPG before. Hmm. It's like a big disaster of some sort. Nuts. That's no good. But what are the odds of that happening again? Well, that's what happens when you kill all of the mortals. What do you mean by that? Yeah, some of this probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you viewers right now, but uh, well, we'll learn more about this as the game goes on. Oh, okay. The force is strong in your family. No. Well, sort of. What do you mean? Who are you talking about? Everyone has forgotten it. Forgotten it. The hour of judgment. Except everyone! But, whatever. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Palfina is one of the divinities. I'll go over what all this stuff means as the game goes on. I don't want to overwhelm you guys with too much at once.
Aww. Eh, she looks kind of cute. Looks like a nice day at church. I think everyone's asleep. Maybe she cast a sleeping spell on them. I don't know. Hey, you're skipping service? Elda's hmm? gonna get mad! Oh, shut up. It's so boring. Huh? Huh? Hmm. Those strange clothes. You can tell he's one of the main characters because of his hair color. Red hair, blue Besides, hair, yellow hair. Even if I do pray, it won't ever change anything. Hey, you call yourself a cleric? Whatever, it's too nice to stay inside. It's a shame to waste such a nice day. Huh? Is that a floating squirrel you have what there? The... Why's the... No! No! Just ignore the purple cloud of smoke. Probably not. I thought you would be happy. You don't have to go to church anymore. No. No, it doesn't work that way. So I guess we got a little floaty squirrel partner with us. Okay. Sure. What is it with that in these animes, anyway? Like, they did that in Lunar. They got that in Growlancer 4. And this... I mean, I suppose I'm not necessarily opposed to that. It just seems a, a, a strange trend. That's all. Hmm? What's going on? Danger music. Apparently a bad guy. What has he done? I haven't seen him do anything yet. Well, he probably killed some people, but... Eh. Virtus, huh? I like that spiky armor you got there, pal. Holy cow. He must be compensating for something. To take over the world? What is a monolith, anyway? Well, I know what it is, but, uh, well, you'll see. Well, it is kind of our monolith, so... Oh, that's really not gonna help you. If we all die, then no one can tell you where it is. It doesn't exactly sound like the best plan. Aren't you human? Well, you'll we'll learn more about what the hell he is eventually. Ow. What, you bring a mace with you to church? Or a flail, or whatever that thing is. Whatever. Yeah, it's probably a flail. I like how, like, unlike, uh... Radiant Historia, the characters' facial expressions and the portraits actually change depending on what they're saying! What a concept! You insolent fool! I just love saying that. Oh, so I guess it's kind of like going back to the planet in Final Fantasy VII or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, she skips out on church. She has no idea what goes on here. Nuts. Yeah, you, well, you can probably run faster than him with all that armor on. Uh oh. Yes. Goodbye, Cecil. Huh? What, what happened? That's weird. Satan, is that you? Or, yes, Satan? Satan is my master? No. No. Deus Ex Machina! 
Uh, literally. So why did you save her who is who skips out on church and not the lady in charge who's probably more competent? Man, where are we anyway? Well, if you're on the Vance path, you never see this room, actually. It only pertains to Cecilia's path. Uh oh. Apparently it's a teleporter... thing. I don't know. Man, what is going on? Nope, I can't hear you! La 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 la, I'm not crazy! La 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 la, no. No. Apparently so. Oh, sorry, I spoiled that it was God five seconds before she shows up. Oh, okay. So it's like the light side and the dark side of the forest, or something or other like that. That's the vessel. It's basically a scale thing. We'll see. I'll, I'll, we'll see how that thing works in more detail later, but it's basically a scale. They, they didn't have electronics, the gods. Hmm, so there's two other guys I gotta find, huh? I wonder if that's that guy with the blue hair. Hmm. Is the mana tree there? No. No, that's a different holy land. Man, this game really does have some similarities to Final Fantasy VII. I never really thought... I mean, I thought about some of them, but I didn't really think about it that much. Nuts. Oh. Oh, okay. Sounds easy. I charge you, girl who skips out on church to save the world. Are you sure she's the best candidate for this task? I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's just me, but maybe you should give the Holy Staff to someone else. I mean, technically, isn't skipping out on church blasphemy? I mean, by the absolute letter of the law, or, yeah, the absolute letter of the law. I mean, maybe it's not uh, a sin or something like that, but I would think it's not good, if that's what you believe in. I could probably figure out what she's saying there, because her voice is kind of breaking up there. But, uh, well, I don't want to spoil the game for you. So... Let's see what we can do. I'm going to go for quite a bit of extra length on this episode so I can get into some of the battle mechanics and such. Ha ha. <laughs> I like the look on his face like a cat. A flying cat? No. No, that's another game. Yeah, so I guess if Nal were a floating squirrel, that's what he'd look like. Yeah, basically Nal. Fortunately, Ralu does not have nearly as many speaking lines as Nal does. So apparently we got this holy staff, or is that a dream or something? Or, I don't know. Oh. Well, you were being crushed by my enormous breasts this whole time? At least they dress her up. I mean, they don't let her breasts hang out of her shirt or anything like that, like some other games. I like the music in this area. Yeah, well, how, where are we anyway? Oh. How 
are you flying anyway? Wouldn't it seem a little weird that you're the only one with a fl flying squirrel hanging around you? I mean, you would think someone else would ask about that or something. Why do you have that flying squirrel anyway? Well, we'll learn more about that later. That's just a little tutorial there. So basically, okay, let me uh, change some of the options here. Oh yeah, press the, hold on. Press the triangle button, go into the menu. Options. Settings, okay. I want to set that to walk because I like pressing the circle button to run around. It makes me feel like I'm doing something. And let's turn on the install data so that way things load faster. And that ought to be good. So all you got to do, take a look at that. Press the X button and it teleports you out of that room. But yeah, you're never able to get into that room on Levant's path. It's just a giant empty room as far as you're concerned. You can never get in there. Not that it's important that you can't get in there, but I always kind of wondered what was in that room. So play Cecilia's path, you learn. So, let's see what we got going on here. Oh, okay. So, I guess we're below where that guy was in the black armor. Yeah, really. That seems weird. Hmm? What's going on? Uh-oh, more danger music. Yeah, this game has a lot of variety to its music. Multiple danger music themes. Tons of battle themes. The forks. Use the forks. Hmm? Yeah, what do you mean by that? Well, kind of can't run from where we are. We're kind of trapped. Ah! Apparently, the Holy Staff is real. It wasn't just a dream. Well, okay, so we got our first battle here. What's this? Okay, so let's take a look at what we got here. I'll just skip through this, but uh, I'll explain it. We got five commands here. Skill, which lets you attack and do stuff. Force Burst, which is essentially your the limit breaks of the game. Defend, defends, and you, uh, uh, what is it? You regenerate some RP, which is the MP of the game. Uh, form changes your formation, but since I'm a magic user, I'm just going to stay in the back. And you could run, but not in this battle. So let's go with skill, and we got a healing spell, and a attack. Uh, everything uses RP, even very basic attacks. Uh, RP is short for Ragna points, by the way. So let's select the attack we want. Now you see in the upper right there, where you see the circle within a circle pointing to the A there? That means that the enemy is weak to the aspect of my attack. Uh, a regular circle there would mean they're neutral to my aspect, and a small er, and an X means that they're strong against. So let's attack. Boom! Wow! I feel more powerful! So yeah. It's just a yeah, little tutorial battle, nothing special, but we got a couple bat wings. Alright. Those are crafting materials. Uh, we'll go over the crafting eventually, but uh, we don't have access to that right at the beginning. But uh, we do get it pretty early in the game, just not in the first area or two. You don't seem that out of shape. All you have to do is wave the wand at him. Hmm? That just come out your crack? No. No. What, you don't remember? Oh. oh okay. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, that'd probably be a good idea there. Okay, so, let's head on down here, and over here. Oh yeah, another cool thing about the game, you press the R button, and you can rotate the room around. Yeah, you couldn't do that in Radiant Historia there, but I love how they do that here. So, okay, let's 
Get out of this place, then. Oh, hey, it's that blue-haired guy. Okay, let's go. Are you in charge of these monsters? Maybe. Oh, who are you looking for? Maybe we can help you out. Or we could have more monsters here. Nuts. Oh, two monsters? I'm totally unprepared for two. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Could be tough. Alright, sounds like a plan. Let's do it! Hmm? What's a hexes? Am I cursed? Am I able to see? No. No, this is a much better game. What do you mean by that? Sounds like a plan. Oh, wow, you can make weapons appear out of thin air too. So a Hexus is someone who inherited the force of the original divinities from the beginning, from the intro there that they were talking about. Alright, let's get him! Let me know if I'm going through the text boxes too fast or too slow or whatever here. So, yeah, this talks about aspect weaknesses. Uh, there's red, strong against white, strong against blue, strong against red there. And there's an element system that works just like any other JRPG there. So, yeah, we've got seven elements and void, which is essentially non-elemental. So, all right. Ow, that hurt. Okay, so we got a few abilities here. We got a buff here. Uh, attack that ignores defense, but obviously stronger attacks cost more. For now, let's just stick to the regular attacks. Now, I don't want to attack that guy, because he's going to be strong against my attack. You see on the right where there's an X? Whereas this guy, I'm at least neutral against. So I want to use that. Although, if I don't kill him, that doesn't do me much good eh, either. So I'm going to go after the one that's weak to me. See, that guy was blue, and Cecilia is white elemental, or white aspect. So that means that he's weak to it. Red on red is just neutral. So... Apparently that guy with the black armor wants the mouth. Hmm? I sense a great disturbance in the force. I hope you like Star Wars puns, viewers, because this LP is going to be chock full of them. And Spaceballs puns. Ah. Oh. Oh. That's... Not good. Uh, well, of course. Yeah, that might be a problem there. Oh, okay. Well, I haven't had any training, though. I skip all my training. So naturally, I'm the logical candidate to save the world. Absolutely. Up, oh, yep, there's a face palm. I hope you like face palms, viewers. Okay, so, uh, yeah, we'll just skip past that. Okay, so first thing we want to do, you see in the lower right, FP, those are force points, essentially the ability points of the game. You use those to invest in your Ragnifax, or essentially weapons there. You, you can uh, invest in them to get uh, a more attack power. Even magic still uses attack power. It's just the base power of the spells that you use. Uh, you learn new abilities with techs, resonance, reduces RP cost, and uh, reduces wait time between uh, attacks there. For now, I want to start with using that. So invest 20, 
or 10 and then 20. So get a little more attack power there. And we can do the same thing then with his weapon. So now let's uh, check this out. This is the save point there. You can use that to save. Oh yeah, one other thing I want to do. Go to party, formation. Okay, we're pretty good there, but I want him to be in the front row since he has a short range weapon, and Cecilia to be in the back row since she has a long range weapon. So let's just do that, and let's head on in. What's the worst that could possibly happen? That's... Hey, how's it going? Well, you ought to be easy to take out then. What is that? Oh! An evil Hexes? I thought if you, like, got the power of the gods, you were supposed to be, like, I don't know, good. Oh! Nuts. Okay, I'll, I'll try to stop saying that. Oh! So, what did that do? Who are you talking about? What do they do? You rebel scum. Whoa! And of course, like all good JRPGs, when the bad guy has a chance to finish off, finish us off, they don't. Absolutely. Hmm. Now, this is our first decision point in the game. They will determine what ending you receive. Uh, for now, I pretty much recommend choosing the correct answer, or at least the least sarcastic answer available. So, and uh, it's not a huge deal either way, but uh, I'll talk more about that later. Let's see. Um, yeah, let's get out of here. At least I think that's the correct answer. I don't know. Oh. What's he gonna do? He can't fit through the door. Let's get him. For boss time. Finally a challenge. <laughs> yeah, kick ass. I love the boss music in this game. Okay, so. Uh, you saw he used a move on us that inflicted the Paralysis status, which, contrary to Final Fantasy games, Paralysis is more like a slow effect, essentially. So, first thing we want to do is attack the guy. Let's do that. And I want Raphael to use Gemini Boost to give, him haste, give himself haste, so he'll get more turns per round. And uh, don't be afraid to go all out here, so we're going to use... Yeah, Ogre Blade to get past his defense. If you can tell by looking at him, he has pretty tough defense. So, uh, let's see. Let's do one more attack there. That ought to be good. And now, once you've dealt about 300 damage to him, then use Angelic Beam, our limit break there. And the reason I want to do that is because elements can determine what items monsters drop there. So let's do this. I'll show you what I can do. Angelic Beam! So yeah, by using Angelic Beam on him, right, hopefully we'll be able to get the draft that I want. Whoa! I feel more powerful! Alright. Yes, I got it! The pointy horn. It's used for some crafting later on. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, uh, if you use a certain element to kill an enemy, they'll drop certain elements, or certain items. So you can somewhat manipulate what items enemies will drop instead of just randomly hoping to get certain items or, or others. So, oh yeah, there are a lot of monsters around here, aren't there? But I thought we killed them. Oh, yeah, I suppose that's a good idea. Oh, what, you didn't even know? Uh, 
I like how he doesn't find a floating, talking squirrel to be uh, out of the ordinary in the least. Just like, he just accepts that. Like Chrono Cross, with the dimensions and all that stuff. But anyway, this is what's called a harvest point. Essentially, you hear a ding sound whenever you go near something, and you can harvest some crafting materials from it. In this case, we get star sands. But sometimes you might get a white fragment from the monolith there, or the harvest point there. Um, harvest points respawn after fighting five battles, so you can check them again later if you want. Now, we've got these stairs here, you go around, and we get a poison ring, our first accessory. So let's take a look. If you go into your menu here, equip, accessory, you could equip it if you want it, but I think a better use for that would be to dismantle it or convert it into force points. You see where it says FP con? That means if you convert it, you'll get 200 force points. And I think that's much more valuable than getting protection from poison. So we got that. I can invest that into my Ragnifax. As a matter of fact, let's do that on screen now here. So, oh! Crap, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to put it into my attack. Well, I'll just redo that off screen. But essentially, I did want to put it into my attack. Get them up to, like, level 5 or something. So, okay. Well, I guess I'll just uh, redo the boss fight off screen. Good thing I uh, saved there, huh? But can we drive out all the monsters out of the Temple of Palfina? Find out next time on Let's Play Hex's Force. This is H.G. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.